We can use number lines to help us multiply and divide when fractions are involved. So if I were to have one-third three times, that means I have one-third, but I have three of these values. So that means I have another third and another third. So that is three marks out of the three it takes to make a whole. So it means I have one whole. One third and another third and another third gets me to one whole. Now if I have one third times one third, that means I have one third one third of a time. So it needs to get smaller and smaller. And the way I do that is each mark, in between each mark, I now need there to be three marks in between each one of these. So that I'm dividing this value, I'm pretending this is a whole, and I need to break this into the thirds. So one, two, one, two, one, two. But you have to do it for the full whole amount rather than just focusing on the one little portion you're looking at. So we we're at one third, and then we had to cut each of our thirds into thirds. So now we figure out, well, how many pieces do I have all together making up the whole? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are now nine pieces making up the whole. And if I'm at this one third, I need to find the first of the three marks. So this is one mark out of the nine it takes to make a whole, so it's one ninth. We can prove this mathematically by going one times one is one and three times three is nine. But this explains why we're doing this process of multiplying straight across. If I have five six, it wants to know five five six one half of a time, how much is that? So that means I now need to divide each one of my parts into two pieces. So I cut each one of my pieces in half, okay? So this had been one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks. So this is where I was, okay? Now I need to know what half of that distance is, okay? So if I have, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten marks. Well, what is half of ten? It's five. So I have one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be located here. It is five marks out of how many pieces to make a whole? Well, this was to 10, 11, and 12. So there I'm at five twelfths. So half of five sixths is five twelfths. Okay, and again, we can prove that mathematically by multiplying straight across. Five times one is five, six times two is 12. So now we're supposed to mix, uh, multiply mixed numbers. It says I have one and one third, one and a half times. We can solve this without converting if we have a number line. If it says I have one third, one time, it means I'm right here. But then I have an additional half. What I can figure out is, well, what's half of one and one third? If I count one, two, three, four marks, half of that is going to be two. So I have these four marks, and then I have making up the one whole, and then I have an additional two marks. That leaves me right here at two whole. Now, I can also prove that mathematically. You want to have that as a backup. You cannot multiply mixed numbers. You have to convert them into improper fractions. 1 times 3 is 3 plus 1 gives you 4 thirds, and 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 halves. So then from there, I can either cross cancel or multiply. I'll just multiply straight across. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6. What is 6 to 12 divided by 6? It's 2. So you are able to prove it mathematically as well. Now if we're looking at this, we now have division. What division means is repeated subtraction. So I'm not trying to find out what half is. I'm trying to find out how many times I can subtract half from this starting amount. So it says if I have three and a half, that's right here, how many times can I take a half out of it? Well, I have one 
half here, another half, so that's two, three, four, five, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was able to take it out six times, but it helps if I write the right location. It's not three, it's three and a half. My bad. So we're actually here. So guess what? That means it's seven. And if you're looking at that, well, three and a half divided by two, three and a half and seven, well, seven is twice what three and a half is. So instead of dividing by half, if I took this amount and multiplied it by the reciprocal of one half, which is two whole, I would also get seven. So that's why we don't ever actually divide when we're solving mathematically, algebraically. We multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction, which just means we flip it over and solve. So here I have two and two thirds, and I'm trying to figure out how many one sixths I can take out of this. Well, if I have only three pieces making up the whole, those pieces are too big. I need six pieces making up each whole. So instead of having three, I'm going to cut each one of these marks in half so that now each one of the marks is worth one-sixth. And if I'm at two and two-thirds, I'm at two and one two-thirds, that's right here, I need to find out how many sixths I have. So here is six, here's another six for 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So two and two thirteenths divided by one sixth is 16. And mathematically, we can prove that as well. We need to convert this to an improper fraction. So three times two is six plus two gives me eight thirds. And if I multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm gonna flip this six there and go, uh, I'm, just to make this easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel. 3 divides by 3, leaving 1. 6 divides by 3, leaving 2. Now I have 8 over 1 times 2 over 1, which is 16 over 1. And it simplifies to 16. So I was able to map it out on the line, but then prove it as a backup mathematically. So number 7 can be a little trickier to do on a number line. It's saying I have one-third and I'm trying to take out how many one-fourths can I take out of it. We can't necessarily break our third up into four equal pieces um, and be able to count that way. So what I did is I marked out one-third. And then as dots, I took that same, oh, that's not zero there, that's one whole. I took that same one whole and I marked out and sectioned it into quarters. So if I compared how many one quarters do I have in one third, I notice I can only get one full one quarter out of one third. Then it's about a third of the way to the next one, okay? Um, to the next halfway point, because I would need another, this would section that quarter into three even sections. And so I really only have one and one third quarters in one third. So that's it's a little harder to map out, but on, in this case, mathematically, it's probably your easiest way that we don't divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I have one third four times in a way, so I would have taken this one whole and divided it into three pieces and been able to get my four out of three. Four thirds of a mark converts to one and one third. So, little, little funky on that last one, but here is that visual representation.